Hello guys, welcome back to another ranking video and yes, today we are ranking the Planet of the Apes movies. Yes, the Planet of the Apes movies. Um, this has been a, a revisiting series for the last couple of weeks now. Uh, obviously watching the first one, Rise of the Planet of the Apes uh, from 2011, then 2014's Dawn, War in 2017, and then of course Kingdom, which is the new movie that has come out this month in cinemas. So Planet of the Apes movies, uh, overall I have gone into a bit more detail, I guess, in terms of my thoughts about each one uh, over on each video. So if you are interested, they are all there on the channel, all four of them. Uh, but today we're ranking them. And Let's just say this right from the bat. This is an amazing movie series of films. I'm not going to lie. Uh, all of these films have, are fantastic movies and they are um, arguably one of the best animated stroke, you know, motion capture films out there. You know what I mean? Up there with things like the Gollum, um, you know, performance and all of that. But of course, we need to start somewhere. So let's start in at number four. Uh, so the worst one out of all four that I put was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This is the uh, second one in the franchise and the first one directed by Matt Reed. And I think the thing in this one that I didn't really like, to be honest, was the human character element. So we had uh, Jason Clark playing Malcolm, we had Gary Oldman playing uh, Dreyfus, we had Kerry Russell playing Ellie, and I just found the human characters to be a bit off-putting uh, in this film. I think arguably it is one of the best looking um, movies of, of all of them. Obviously they have got better in time, but I think this one had that good blend of real stroke fake CGI, if that makes sense. Um, but enjoyment level I think was, was down the bottom. This was the one where humans very much were, you know, the, the main Minority, they were still functioning in terms of uh, able to fight back, I guess, against the apes. And the apes, I guess, these as apes and all that, they did feel very much threatened by humans still at this point. They'd only just rose, obviously, in the first movie. So it was it was that element of story and, you know, the, the actual apes, I guess, turning that corner and actually becoming more of a threat, I guess, in terms of, you know, they're, they're taking over kind of thing. So, yeah, I think I put it a three and a half star because, you know, I think enjoyment level did come into the score rating. Amazing looking film, don't get me wrong. Um, and obviously Andy Serkis as Caesar and, and all of that was was great. But I think just Gary Oldman, the whole, um, they were like in San Francisco, like I think they were like the bank or like the city hall and the humans were, were like um, a closed off community because obviously they didn't want to get like infected because that's what wiped out the majority of the humans before. Um, yeah, so I think they had a real opportunity in this film to continue on the events of the first film, but everything was kind of just forgotten about. So I just think, you know, there were the elements in there that could have carried over, but maybe this was like a Matt Reeves thing, trying to do his own thing. And uh, and yeah, so there it is, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, three and a half star and up fourth. But as I say, none of these films are bad films. They definitely ain't bad films. They're just, you know, they just, for me. So in at number three then, I actually gave a four star, and this is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which is the newest movie in cinemas. Now, I gave it a four star. Um, I found it to be interesting. This was set several generations after um, Caesar and everything. So um, there was, I thought, a lot of parallels with Star Wars and, you know, the whole, um, you know, prequels versus now the fourth movie of like this new hope and and that new hope was Noah who was played by Owen Teague so we get Andy Serkis like stepping away from the franchise obviously not playing Caesar anymore and um, you know starting a new chapter in this thing and I thought the plot was pretty decent in terms of um, you know uh, Proximus was like this big ape who was like the king really uh, in the, within this kingdom and um, obviously the apes now have got to a massive state and um, humans very much are just like primates really and just wild animals in a way um, but Kevin Kevin Durand is playing Proximus, and um, I think that was I thought he did fantastic in that role. I gotta be honest, and it was really interesting to see, you know, um, that the element of the, the greed of Proximus. He wanted this vault, which was like this, you know, underground vault, which had a lot of tanks and human like technologies within. Um, but then you had then Nova, then who was this this young girl who really was, you know, wanting to to get the tech back for humans. So they could potentially fight back one day um, and all of that. So really interesting and really good to start like a new trilogy, but keeping Caesar stuff there. So yeah, obviously looked amazing. I watched it in cinema and uh, yeah, I gave it a four star. Number two then now, and um, this is where things might surprise people. Um, in a number two, I've actually given a four star to War of the Planet of the Apes. So this is the, um, sorry, War 4, the, the rest of them are War of. This one's War 4, that's why I get confused. War 4, the Planet of the Apes. This is one where we really see them fight back and actually, you know, try and take back more of what's theirs, I guess. Um, the human character in this one is Woody Harrelson, who's playing the Colonel. And um, he just has this obsession with, uh, you know, trying to control the apes and just, you know, want to 
own them as much as he can kind of thing. And yeah, my real negatives with the first trilogy of movies is the fact that the humans do change from movie to movie. Gary Oldman was in that one, obviously, in the second one. Then you had Woody Harrelson in this one. Then you had James Franco in the first one. And I really think that, you know, there was there was a good story undertaken in the first one. And I think they, they definitely carried it on. But, you know, it wasn't like generations later, so it shouldn't be retconned. And I think this was the one that, you know, did look visually amazing, um, but it just missed a few plot points for me. It was all about the war and fighting and, and all of that and just the actual apes were captured and then they were like busted out and all of that aspect. So there's some interesting elements in there and you know Matt Reeves and, and the score as well, sorry, from Michael Giacchino um was was brill. So yeah, but four star for me. Um I think I think the other one for me was just a little bit better for me. I, I yeah. And that one of course is in at number one. I gave it a four star also and this is Rise of the Planet of the Apes. The first movie for me I thought was the best. And if you'd asked me before I was doing any of this, would I have done that? I wouldn't have. I definitely wouldn't have said the first one I probably would have said War or Dawn to be number one. So surprising that Dawn actually came out as number four and also Rise for me coming out as number one. I think they really set it up you know, great. Um, you know, the fact that the chimps were a part of a scientific experiment, they explained uh, the green eye element and why they were so brainy and, you know, Caesar then rising and getting captured and then rising and um, clubbing together with all these apes and, and giving them all this the, these drugs or whatever to make them you know, smart and get the green eyes and then they all bust out and it's just, it has so much going on in the film and I think the pacing, it just works really, really well. And for me, obviously the films do look great and they sometimes made it they made a good decision going around getting Matt Reeves involved um, because I think visually it looks brill but you know Rupert Wyatt I think deserves a lot of credit for like the first movie because his direction in this film I think is great 105 minutes so like just under two hours long it's a perfect length movie I think you got the uprising you know uh, scene on um, on San Francisco Bridge on the Golden Gate Bridge and you know the whole relationship between James Franco and um, and Caesar is really apparent and, and very deep you got James Franco's father then as well, who is John Lithgow, and that also is really deep. And you know, you got the symbol of like where Caesar's what Caesar symbol is with a circle with like a little thing inside it, and that's all explained in terms of like his history of like living with humans, and that's why he's so compassionate. And I just think it has so much good story building moments which impact the other movies. So even though as a standalone film it is, you know, it arguably doesn't look the best because obviously. You know, 2011, technology progressed massively in the years after it. I think it has the most core potential in terms of plot, and it definitely sets that foundation for the rest of the story. Like, even the newest one, the fourth one, related back to elements from the first one, especially like the symbol of Caesar's symbol, and, you know, the, the talk about the humans getting wiped out. You know, that's a very small part of the franchise, really, when you think about it, we've got four movies now. But the first one's so pivotal, and I think it's done really well. And I kind of wish James Franco's character lived in the second one, and, you know, was part of maybe the team to work on a vaccine, to get the human... I mean, I'm sure all these things were considered, but uh, for me, I think it's surprising that it's number one, but it's rightly so, and it's rightly deserved. If you haven't seen any of these movies, I 100% recommend that you do. They are... Um, arguably one of the best franchises out there uh, and weirdly I don't own any of these on 4k I actually just watched them all on Disney Plus so they are there if you want to watch them uh, but I would really love to own these physically um, hopefully they get like individual releases or something or some sort of box set or you know um, yeah we'll, we'll see because they've got the trilogy box set now but we'll see what they do when they release Kingdom maybe they'll release them all individually or maybe they'll do a full box set, which obviously I wouldn't want to get because there's going to be a fifth one. So yeah, I'm definitely going to pick this up though at some point because amazing franchise and I'd love to watch the behind the scenes of all these films. So yeah, as I said at the beginning, if you want to watch any of the reviews, they are all there on the channel. Of course, an amazing franchise, The Planet of the Apes. Can't wait till the next one. Recommend going to the cinema to see the newest one. It's a soft reboot in terms of the story does carry on, but it is a reboot, but it is done very well. And um, for me, I think it was highest in well you know that new film is third in the list it was slightly better in my opinion than dawn so i would highly recommend you go and check it out uh, but yeah there's the franchise of plant the apes thanks so much for watching guys stay tuned for more videos coming soon of course i'll see you in the next one. goodbye